Welcome to this week's episode of The Square. I'm really excited yet again to have another host um, joining the roster for The Square. Today we have Emily Strain. Emily, why don't you tell us all about yourself? Yeah, well, I'm going to try to live up to how good you are at hosting, Brandon. So please <laughs> It's no not going to be judgment. hard to do. <laughs> um, so Emily Strain, I uh, lead our uh, workplace strategy team here at Corgan. So I get to talk to people for a living, understand what makes organizations tick, um, engage with their employees. So this is just kind of a different way to do that. So I'm excited to join you today. And side note, seven, um, a little over seven years ago, first project I ever did at Corgan, first story we ever told was one of your projects. So I'm super excited because oh. of Fossil, it came full circle. Yes. So I was so young in that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the square again, and let's get started with this week's episode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Square. I'm Emily Strain, and today we are going to be talking about brand. We've got two really fantastic guests today, um, both coming from really different perspectives. So first up, I'll introduce the person I'm seeing uh, <laughs> live for the first time in, I don't even remember, Yay. three months or something, months. Um, Paige Terrell. She is the director of our branded environments practice here at Corgan. Um, she supports everything from workplace to schools to aviation. She's got a really kind of depth and breadth of knowledge. So we're really excited to have Paige with us today. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And also with us today, we have Eric Toki. He is the founder and president of Toki Design. He was instrumental in helping Corgan a couple of years ago with our rebrand, and he has a completely different perspective on what brand means to companies. So, Eric, thank you so much for being with us virtually today. Happy to be here. This is definitely the new world we're living in, huh? Some people <laughs> together, some people virtual. It's great. It's nice to see human beings together. It's, it's exciting. I know, it really is, it really is. So Eric, I wanna start off with you. Tell us simply, why does brand matter so much? Why should companies care about it? Well, branding is important because every company has strengths and weaknesses. And if you're an architecture company and you go to market and what you say is, hey, we're really great listeners and we collaborate and we've got good talented designers, you sound like everybody else in the world. Every architecture firm in the world says those things. So you have to find messages that are distinct to you, that grow out of who you are and how you're different, and that allows you to go to market with a unique message, separates you from everybody else, and it keeps that insidious commoditization from creeping in that allows your developer clients or your corporate clients, your education clients, to say, you know what, all architecture firms are the same. So we really try to say, you know, find that essence that makes you different and goes out into the market so, you, so that you have something that is unique about yourselves. Yeah, so it's all about being distinct and unique, right? Yeah, and, no, and more than that, it's about being who you are and not feeling like you have to impose some fake, you know, persona on top of you. Uh, good branding is going to grow right out of who you are at your essence, what your company culture is and how it's unique. Yeah, I love that, Eric. And I think that's so important, whether you're talking about um, brand and, and its value to a company or whether you're talking about that in space. So Paige, talk to us a little bit about why branding is so important in an environment sense. Well, I think a lot of people, I'll, I'll start by kind of defining what is branding in the physical environment first, just to kind of set a baseline. Um, you know, it's, it's telling those stories and taking that unique brand and expressing it in the physical environment. So it's it's one touch point within a whole brand strategy. So, you know, you've got your you've got your logo, you've got your website, you've got maybe you have a retail store, maybe you have uh, headquarters offices. Um, that the physical space is one touch point within that whole strategy. So, aligning all of that messaging that Eric's talking about and how does that come to life for the, the people that are using the space, visitors, you know, both external and then employees and the staff that are living and breathing in that, you know, that environment every day. Um, I think a lot of times brand tends to want to be the logo. Yeah. Um, that we, we get a lot of requests for, you know, we want, we want to integrate brand into our space. Um, so where are we going to put the logo? And that's, that's a, 
a, a component. You know? <laughs> Eric's like, no, 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 no. You know, <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a tiny component for for me. I, I love the idea of if we didn't have a logo at all, what does the space say about that organization? Um, even if there's no graphics, you know, what does the interior design say about the space and what experience can the users have within it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, does it, uh, does it create an emotion? Does it tell a story? Um, you know, is it, is it orienting around your culture and, and helping unify the employees under a, 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 a larger mission? It, and it can even change a perception of an organization. So you may be seen in the marketplace as, as one thing, and then they come to your office and they're like, whoa, I had no idea you were this huge organization. Um, you know, they thought you were in a small, a small tenant suite in a high-rise building, and then they drive up and see that you have a, you know, 150,000 square foot ground up building and a parking garage. <laughs> that's a very different perception, perception suddenly yeah. that's changed um, just by the physical environment. So I think it's important to to give all of those 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 touch points, um, and it's it's just one piece of, of the overall overall strategy. Yeah, I love what you said there, Paige, about it feeling the environment kind of feeling a certain way. And you know, when I think about some of the, kind of the ultimate brands, if you will, you know, Starbucks comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we often hear in our industry is, well, we want it to kind of feel like a Starbucks. So, like, what makes Starbucks feel that way? Yeah. For me, it, it's so interesting. I, I heard a, an interview a while back. Someone said, um, you know, everybody at Starbucks, Starbucks must be such a great company to work for because the people are so happy and perky. And the the truth is, is they hire happy, perky people because <laughs> that's part of their brand yeah. is to the, the people themselves are part of the brand. Um, so even as we talk about the virtual world and, you know, we're, we're connecting here virtually with Eric and, and we have been for months now with coworkers and the people themselves become a, a touch point in that strategy. So yeah. how, we, how we talk, how we dress, how we present ourselves, you know, do we slouch and, you know, are we bored or are we, are we happy and perky? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that is a part of it, right? They're that welcoming, Hi, welcome to Starbucks. Can I get your order? And they remember your name. And that's so exciting to feel welcome. Yeah, I think the people being a part of the brand is something that, that sometimes gets overlooked. And Eric, I know when we worked with you on, on our rebrand, and I was lucky enough to be a part of that process, it was really a lot of fun. Um, you, you really believe in kind of starting with the people and understanding the, the people in an organization in order to help a company align their brand. Can you talk to me a little bit about your process and, and how you approach uh, solving that problem? Yeah, I mean, again, what what we do, our philosophy on, on working with, with all the kinds of companies that we work with is that if we can uncover who those companies are at their essence, uh, that there is gonna be something that's unique. And then expressing that uniqueness is the fun part, right? That's the joy of it. That's when we get to do the brand identity systems and the websites and all the cool flashy stuff that everybody associates with brand, the big posters, whatever those things are. The hard part is, especially with big companies, is getting enough detail and d digging into the information so that you can actually uncover those little quirky essences of the company. What, how do they respond to stress? How do they deal with problems? How do they think differently than all of the other companies like them that are out there? Because every company has a different way of doing things that's slightly different, just like all families have different ways of dealing with things. And if you could figure out what they, they're doing and the specific places that they want to go in their life, what is success to them? Is it growth? Is it adding more people? Is it raising rates but keeping the team smaller? Is it doing the highest quality work and not worrying about money and it's not worrying about getting larger? There are all different kinds of success that companies, the way that companies define themselves. And understanding those things so that you can help the company reach where they want to go 
is the most important thing. So man, we do surveys and we do interviews and we do focus groups and we talk to your to clients and we talk to people who work with you. And sometimes the clients go, these guys are wonderful. And then people that, you know, uh, vendors say, wow, these guys are jerks. Uh, and the, <laughs> sometimes, the, sometimes the people in the, who work for the, the group, the leadership says, oh, we're wonderful, we're smart, we're organized. And the people say, we're disorganized, we don't know where we're going, you know, we don't know what we're doing. And aligning those things to make sure that management understand what the troops are seeing and management understands what the clients are seeing and management understands what their, what their partners are seeing are all critical to making sure that you're aligning the company in the right way. Yeah, and I love what you're talking about, about aligning things to really kind of find the truth and the authenticity around what makes a company unique. I think that's really super interesting. That's the, that's the uh, most important you know, thing. You know, in these weird times that we're living in right now, I just feel like alignment is is tough, right? Especially as we talk about being in both the digital and the physical world. Um, it is abnormal to be talking to you on a screen and then to be talking to Paige in person. And so I'm wondering, you know, Paige, I'll, I'll start with you. How do companies kind of keep a brand um, consistent when we're living in this um, world of, of distributed work where we've got some people in workplaces and some people at home. How does a company kind of unify around their brand? I, I think there's there's some physical components, you know, there's the look and feel of your brand, uh, you know, if we're virtual and there's our Zoom backdrops and there's, there's some little things you can do like that, but I think having a, a culture um, where people really understand the brand and they've they've bought into it and they're they're drinking the Kool Aid so to speak it was as we had said earlier even um, they they have a sense of um, com camaraderie I think about it uh, a little bit in terms I'm, I'm I love analogies so I'll probably have more uh, in this podcast but um, I think about it like if you're um, think of how connected we are to our uh, alumni. Um, association. So we, we go to school, we go to university for four years, um, we get super connected, we love our football team. Mm -hmm. You know, 20, 30, 40 years later, we are still cheering and still buying the t-shirts, still drinking the Kool-Aid for that sports team, even though we're not there in the building. Mm. Um, and and that, that brand still lives on, even though, I mean, we're not having weekly Zoom calls with our former classmates. I mean, yeah. Maybe some people are, but... Um, you know, how, do, how does that stay, stay alive even though we're not in the physical building? So it, it can live, live on, but it's that culture and community and sense of um, belonging that you have that, that you built, that you built yeah. in a physical environment that now moves and stays with you because of, of what you had. Yeah. But I think a little bit about, so, so that's the, the people that already had that. How do you... What about the new employee? What about the person that's being hired day one in the middle of all this and they haven't had the chance to come to the, the main headquarters office and, and meet all of the people and, and go to lunch or have a happy hour? You know, how do they feel connected to the brand and um, how do they exhibit the brand when all they have is maybe a tool to read? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really big challenge. And I know we've been doing a, a lot of research through our Hugo initiative and um, Cross collaboration across different market sectors on um, how how we can deliver a, a branded work from anywhere yeah. um, experience, not just uh, work from home, but work from anywhere experience. And it all centers around like physical touch points, virtual touch touch points, and cultural touch mm. points. So you know we can we can develop. A series of you know coffee mugs and virtual backdrops and and physical things and furniture that way we're all working in the same ergonomics and we have some consistency there yeah um, but then having virtual tools that um, allow us to collaborate and and how do we curate a program for an organization that collects all of those things and kind of says here's what you should do to maintain your brand and your culture virtually yeah. um, and collaborating with HR on cultural aspects. Are there, are there pop-ups? Get, get to know your team and, and it has a bio of staff. I mean, we've brainstormed tons of fun things to, to be able to connect all those. So having those three touch points 
I think it's important to make sure that that brand lives on and is also oriented to new newcomers. Yeah, I love Paige. I love that analogy about you know education and how those spaces kind of create camaraderie and sort of unite us and then it carries on. I think that's really clear. Um, Eric, I'm curious on your thoughts. I know a lot of the work that you do is what Paige was talking about with the digital and the virtual. So how do you think companies can keep a brand intact when everybody is not together? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, this is going to be the reality going forward. Even though it started as a reaction to a crisis, I think what a lot of companies have come to realize is uh, this is actually a, a freeing moment that people can work from home effectively, people can collaborate effectively, the tools are catching up with the demand. And so going forward, I think you're gonna to start to see fewer people getting on planes to travel long distance. And understanding how to work remotely and, and, and build these teams is, as Paige said, is gonna be incredibly important to retaining the, the sense of sort of a central gravity that keeps a far-flung team united. Um, and the way, the, the, the wonderful thing about this is that this is a giant experiment right now. Everybody's figuring this out. It's, it's we have a, you know, a thousand, 10,000 companies out there that are all innovating in their own ways, trying to figure out the right way forward. And the learning hasn't even started to really be, uh, to be shared and, and uh, figure out what the best practices are. We're three months into this whole total experiment. So figuring out how to use virtual backgrounds, how do you use Zoom in ways that build culture as opposed to sort of eroding it? Um, we're seeing examples of companies that are, are sort of trying to hack Zoom calls or Microsoft Team calls to create new kinds of building. How do you use all these little squares, this Brady Bunch grid of people, but do something with it that Zoom didn't really intend for it to do. Like, can you make a giant mural out of everybody's background? Can you get people to make one giant picture out of all of them if you share different kinds of backgrounds? How do you do, how do, you do that so that you can actually use these tools to team build instead of allowing their natural sense of sort of isolation and separation? Um, I think this is, this is a fantastic experiment. The companies that do this right, the companies that figure out how to do things that are inherently right for their culture are going to come out of this stronger and over time after the virus goes away and we can all get back to just working as close to normal as possible, we're still going to have the learning that this kind of distance, uh, widespread diaspora of teams is going to become the reality for lots and lots of companies, big and small. And the smart ones are figuring out how to make these tools work for them right now. Yeah, Eric, I'm so glad you said that. I couldn't agree with you more. I do think that this is a big giant experiment that maybe nobody really <laughs> wanted. Um, right. But, uh, but, you know, the companies that are smart are really taking it and learning from it. You know, as I think about how work will, will change after this, we all know that it will. Um, I'm curious, Paige, on what your thoughts are around the role that brand might play in, in kind of a future workspace. So I think it will probably look different. I think each organization will place a different value on the work environment. But just kind of at a broad high level, what are your thoughts on how brand might show up um, in the next couple of years? Yeah, I think people are going to want it to be stronger in the space than, than they had before. I think we're going to have... Um, a, a, a hybrid situation, at least for the, the uh, foreseeable future, where we have some people working from home and in the physical environment. Um, some companies have chosen to say not for six more months. Um, so there's lots of different different ways, but um, I think there's still going to be a need a need for a, a, a place to come together. I mean. As employees, maybe we can all work remotely somewhat, but we still have clients and customers um, and people that we need to bring in and show them what we do or or maybe show them what we make. I mean, there. think of all the organizations that have services and products that they have to use a physical environment to help 
um, to, to help physically show it. So even before we, we, all, of, all of this happened, um, we were seeing a rise in customer service uh, or customer experience centers. Okay. So um, it, it, it's a place where people can have that wow factor. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're pouring all of their efforts into, into one space. And it's got a hospitality component. It's got almost like an exhibit component. Mm -hmm. um, it's really almost like a showroom for your services. And, and those were already on the rise. Um, I would say, I don't, I, this is just a, a guess of my own, maybe 50% of our projects have a customer service or a cu customer experience center mm -hmm. um, where they're bringing people in and entertaining them. So yeah. at a minimum, I think those, we're gonna see more of those and that impacts the space plan. So having this conversation about brand very early and seeing how it impacts the space plan, do we need a, a 2,000 or 4,000 square foot zone to, to just entertain? Yeah. Um, and maybe the worker area is, is a little different, but that piece it's is so a crucial. showcase for your brand. I mean. And I think, too, back to what you said earlier about, you know, employees kind of coming when they do come into the office. You know, today was my first day to mm -hmm. come back here. Um, <laughs> and you're, and I just the feeling that I got as I was approaching this building was just kind of indescribable. This mix of like kind of pride, mm -hmm. I think, in this space that I work. And I think you know, the importance of brand and what it plays, you know, in the perception of your company, whether it's your employees or your visitors, I think is so crucial. Yeah. What can we, what can we provide in our workspaces um, and education spaces and healthcare spaces, all, all the spaces um, that will draw people out of their home and make them want to come to work? Yeah. What is it, uh, what is it about, I mean, we talked about Starbucks earlier. What is it about Starbucks that people are willing to leave their home and go sit in a, in, in a noisy coffee shop <laughs> and work? And it's like, we love it. Um, why? Uh, what is it about it? Um, and can, can we bring some of that? I'm not saying bring, bring the, the coffee shop necessarily, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of people have done that, right? They've tried to, to emulate that. They think that that's the draw. But what is it about that that people are willing to leave their homes um, yeah, yes, it's, it can be more efficient, right? We don't have the distractions of our kiddos and our, our fur babies that are, that are distracting us, so it's more efficient. But then there's also this, what's going to make me want to come? So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm that proud. Draw. Yeah, I'm proud to be in a space. I love coming here. It's, it's, I'm sitting here today going, I forgot all these amazing views and so much sunshine. And, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I have missed this. And, you know, yeah. it's, and I think it's great. And to, it's kind to of build on what she's too. saying, Eric, I think I'm that, that curious that, what your thoughts are on this. Oops, sorry about that. To build on what you're saying, I think the, the, the opportunity for companies that have offices is that, uh, that this whole challenge with the virus is creating is that I think people are gonna feel much more com comfortable going to offices. And if they can have a Starbucks-like experience in their office, that could become much more preferable than actually going to a Starbucks where you're around people you don't know, you don't know what kinds of social distancing and protection they've been taking. But if you can go to the office where you know the people, you know that, that they're trustworthy, the culture has built a team effect, all you have to do now is transfer that energy to your office and frankly, you know, I, if I were Howard Schultz, I'd be much more worried about uh, the future of Starbucks and, uh, than I would about the future of the office space. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. And I love the term that you said, the word energy. And when I think about brand and the role that it plays in a workspace, there is an energy that it really kind of brings to the built environment. So I really love that you said that. We had a, a client just yesterday, we were doing a, um, walking them through a guided discussion to help them set some of their goals for their space and understand how brand might play a role, literally having this discussion with them. Um, and one of the leaders said, our employees are so proud to, to work for us, not necessarily work work here in this building, but work for us. So they, they have a, obviously a strong brand and a strong culture that people want to go there. And he said, I want to capture that. Whatever it is that makes them proud to work for us, I want that to somehow come forward in the space. Mm -hmm. And that was what I was like, that's there's our goal right there. That's our job. That's what's going to make us successful for the client, for the employee, and their every every day 
um, experience. And if we can make the two of them happy, then we're happy. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Um, I'm curious, Paige, if you have an element or a project or something that you felt like you really just kind of, we just really got it right, you know? (laughs) It just really, it did exactly what you said. You figured out why people wanted to come there, and then you were able to um, translate that into a space. Yeah, I think it, you know, I'm always, my current projects are always my favorite ones <laughs> uh, and the most recent ones, but I, I think I probably would want to go back to one of the very first branded projects that, that I did. Um, and that was at the AAA, it was a regional office for AAA here in the DFW area. We, we dug into who the company was and, and their history of, in the automotive world and, um, and, that became a, a sort of the, the overarching theme of, of our project was their was their brand, um, and I, I remember two experiences at the end of that project. Um, you know, we did a, a lot of a lot of elements, and without going into all the details, but lots of little touches from carpet patterns to feature walls to you know embedding graphics and even the arrangement of the space and the naming of the spaces mm-hmm. um, were all geared around around the this automotive industry. And two experiences: the CEO walked in after the space was complete, and I remember he he threw his hands up and said this is it. This is our future. And man, Ooh. I was like, that gave okay. me, that's the, yeah. that's the thing you want to hear and from the CEO. Yeah, that's what you want to hear from the CEO. <laughs> and I thought, man, we impacted their business and set them in a, in a new trajectory yeah. forward. Um, and I don't think that they knew they even needed that at the time. I mean, they did. They knew they needed it, which is why it was very different from any of the other spaces. Yeah. But I don't think they ever expected it to to feel like that yeah um and then the other instance was walking the space at the end of the project we do a a a walkthrough and um an employee was sitting over there and she she gets up out of her desk takes the time to walk over she knows we're the architect we've got our (laughs) our clipboards in our hands and um, we must be official so she comes over and says i just want to say thank you i love my new space um and she started to go through some of those things that we had done um, and creating quiet spaces and um, lounge areas and embedding graphics and things all throughout the spaces. She said, I love coming to work every day. And that to me is the impact, the the responsibility and the potential impact that we have on people. Yeah. Um, that's why, why I do what I do every day um, is to, to get, to remember, remember that gal that goes to work every day from from eight to five or, or even, you know, longer, longer, <laughs> or she has a, a second shift and she's yeah. working from five to midnight and missing her kids. Yeah. You know, give them a place where they love to come to. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, it had an impact for sure. And it was like this aha moment. And I was like, okay, this is, this is what I want to do. And that, that literally kind of set me on that path of doing branded. I love that. It's definitely about the people. For sure. I have one last question that I want to ask to both of you. Um, Eric, I'm going to start with you. Um, So if you could tell your clients, man, there's just one really crucial thing that you need to do to get this right, what would be your advice that you would give to a client? You know, there's lots of different kinds of design, and what branding is is essentially designing your path forward to the future. And there's no such thing as have not having a brand. Uh, if you don't have a brand and if you don't have a plan, that's a plan, you know? It's, it's no plan is a plan. So uh, a person who is engaging with a good branding firm is starting to design the future of the culture of the company, the future of the perception of the company, how that company is gonna achieve success, and how they're going to differentiate themselves from everybody else in the market. So planning and designing your future is the same thing as branding. I love that. That's Mm -hmm. great. Not having a plan is a plan. (laughs) Remember that. Um, Paige, what about you? What's the one thing that companies should should think about about branding moving yeah, forward? I, it's, it's similar to what Eric is saying, have a plan, but um, it's more about the timing of it. The plan starts so early. Um, I would say it starts even 
even before you find a space because where you select your space to be is a part of that experience and and perception that people have mm -hmm. so are you a are you a high-rise company in the in the hustle and bustle of downtown are you a, a a warehouse historical West End area like we have that that Corgan's offices are in um, are you in a rural rural area um, with walking distance to shops and cafes um, that vibe alone starts to set the stage from the outside in and that that sequence that you have as you move from the parking lot into the building, into the interior, um, it starts as early as finding your space. So um, I'd love to have conversations early about what the physical environment, and where it needs to be, and then maybe go on pause, let, let the clients go find those spaces, yeah. and then come back and say, now let's figure out what it looks like on, on, on the outside and the inside. Um, you know, as, as a holistic approach. We've had, um, we had a client a couple years ago, an accounting firm that was in, in North Dallas, you know, kind of a nondescript part of town, um, nice building, nice area, decent amenities nearby, nothing wrong with the location, um, but not really overly st stating anything about who they are or, or what they do. Um, and they made a conscious effort to move downtown. Their goal was to attract young talent um, and to really bring in some new energy um, with people. Um, and they made a conscious effort to move downtown uh, into downtown Dallas into the hustle and bustle of vibrant museums nearby, um, shops, nightlife, restaurants. Um, there's Starbucks. Even a, there's Starbucks. <laughs> there's, uh, there's even a grocery store in their, in their building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a high rise, you know, multi tenant building, and there's a, a retail component at the bottom. Um, and that was so strategic on their part. Um, now they have these amazing views of downtown, mm -hmm. um, which becomes a backdrop. You know, that, that brand now is what you see through the windows and the skyline and this idea that you're sort of in the mix of it all. Um, and now they've, they've, they're more of that like cool accounting firm as yeah. opposed to sort of the, the regular, <laughs> regular accounting firm. Um, so yeah, I think that that's important for them to think about that in terms of even just real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Your real estate plays such a huge role, I think, in the identity of your brand for sure. Yeah. So, well, this has been incredibly enlightening for me. I have really enjoyed talking to both of you um, and learning a little bit more about brand. So thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. So if you've been listening to this via audio, make sure you check out the video because we've got some cool images to show you today. Thanks.